So we are continuing our series on home labbing. If you haven't seen my first two videos, they will be linked down below. Now these are really useful, especially if you are a beginner. The first video is just an introduction to home lab what it is, who it's for, and why you might want to do it. The second video is just talking about planning your home lab if you are going to undertake the endeavor of this great hobby we call home labbing. This video is actually where we get our hands a bit dirty. We're going to build our own PC and not just a PC, an actual NAS box. If you're not familiar with NAS, all that means is network attached storage. And all that means is a hard drive or two on a computer, that basically is going to be serving most of your data to the greater network and even sometimes outside of the network. And you can do a lot of different things with these machines. And you know, even though we're building a NAS, it doesn't mean that this doesn't apply to building any type of PC. And this is actually one of the skill sets that I strongly recommend that you strive to master. Because home labbing, well, there is a certain truth to it. And that certain truth is it will break. So you better be prepared not only to dig into software, but also to be able to handle and build and fix and repair hardware. All right, this is my first time building a PC. So behold, Pretty much all the pieces that you're gonna need to build out this project. And I'll show you the case here in a minute it is the Jonesbow N2 NAS case. Now you can consider this any build that you may be building, but this one is specific for home labbing. It's probably a good place to start if you wanna build out a small little machine. Now, the thing about this build is the motherboard. The motherboard is not only the motherboard, but it also includes an onboard N100 Intel chip. The reason I went with this is because it's a low powered processor, so I don't need to push much power to it since it's gonna be on a lot. So I can save a little electricity there. It's not the most powerful, but all modern Intel chips actually have a technology on board that makes it really easy to work with Plex and to transcode videos. So I'm going to be using this as a NAS box, but I'm also gonna store my media on it and probably more than likely put some containerization software on there if it's not built into the NAS software and also put Plex on this box. So it'll become my storage and also my Plex server. So now some of the other areas to pay attention. This has a one channel. The N100 only functions on one channel of memory. So I'm gonna put a 16 gig in there. It has two M2 MVME slots. You can actually put two hard drives there. Over here, we have the power supply. Now this is an SFX power supply. That is what this build calls for. So not only do you wanna pay attention to what size motherboard, this happens to be an ITX. So it needs to be an ITX compatible case. And this has to be an SFX sized pay su or power supply and this is the side we size we need for our case this one was inexpensive i'm a little sketched about it. it was like 35 bucks again all this stuff will be linked down below over here we actually have some memory that i actually had laying around now this is sodem ddr5 4800 uh this is what 16 gigs so this will be for my ram over here this is the hard drive i went with this is just a 256 terabyte hard drive rather small but you don't need much remember this is just going to house just a few things and most of the data will be on these hard drives which brings us over here we will have two of these i actually got this refurbished this is an iron wolf 12 terabyte we'll have two of these and we'll do something called raid which just basically means it's a mirrored copy between the two hard drives now i won't get the full 24 if i have two of these i actually only get 12 but that's okay if one fails i'll still have a copy now that's not a backup Okay, don't get confused that with a backup. We will actually talk about my backup strategy in another video. These little pieces here, whoops, are actually going to be linked below if we need them. They're just adapters just in case I need them for this board to hook up with I'm trying to hook up. And then lastly, we have our SATA cables. These will be linked down below. These are really cool because they're labeled. You can see here P1 over here and then there'll be a P1 over there. So that way I can just make sure I'm tracking these cords and hooking up the right ports over here, these SATA ports. 
into the right hard drives. So this should be pretty much the build. With that, let's talk about this case because it's rather unique and we need to tear it open anyways. So I'll move all this stuff out and we'll talk about the Jonesbow N2. This is the Jonesbow N2. Now I purchased all this stuff with my own money. This is a pretty cool case. You can see here, here's the front of it. Here's the bottom, nice rubberized pad. And here is the back of the case. Now, obviously the motherboard's gonna sit up here and then our drives are gonna sit down below. It has a nice fan that's included here. Our power supply will slide in there. And on front is kind of where the magic happens with this case, especially if you're looking to build out a NAS. Right here is actually where we have the hard drives here. So there's some other pieces that I need to grab out of the box. I've actually got to find those pieces but um, yeah, your hard drives will slide in there and then we'll have the ability to have a custom made NAS. So with that out of the way, pretty slick case. It should be pretty fun to build. I'm gonna leave this off for right now and I'm gonna go find those other pieces and then we'll start ripping this apart. Okay, now that I found some of the bits and pieces, we just have to start taking up this case. And it looks like the first thing we need to do is take off this top lid. Now they do include this little tiny Allen key. So let's do that. Okay, inside here, it looks like we have our front connectors, place to push down the motherboard. But first I think what we need to do is take off some of these back panels. So they got these little thumb, nope, they come all the way out, all right. This should give us access to the fan. All right, that fan is, is it connected? No, it's not connected. All right, so pull that out there. Okay, so now we need to grab our power supply. All right, now that we have that bracket off, we can break this down. These are going to be not what we need. This, let's see, we need two Molexes. We have one, where's our Molexes? There they are. So there is two Molexes, set of connectors. So let's see how we can get this. This needs to go in here, the bulk of these cables. I assume this will go up here. And then these, we're gonna need to go through here. Okay, now if we can slide this down in. Okay, now that we got that done, that looks pretty sturdy. Looks like we're gonna need two Molex connectors, which are right here. These are gonna connect into here and provide power to these SATAs. Now you'll see these SATAs are labeled SATA 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and here's where our fan goes. So let's go ahead and plug this one in. Get it the right way here. There is one, and our other one is over here. So that should be all we need to do. Just got those plugged in. Now, let's do our SATA cable. See P1, this will be P2, and that's pretty easy. Plug those right in. I don't have any others, so I'll let that lay. I'm assuming this will go up here somewhere we may have to straighten it out a little bit we'll see but let's do that looks like we got the power supply so now let's go over to the top board should get those out of the way for now this should just snap on this way just like that i assume and our motherboard should go on this way these are all the connectors we'll need down here. Make sure we get these up. All right, these are the main ones that we will need to power it. Our holes look lined up. Let's take some of these screws. All right, there we have it. So this is Plates in there, pretty solid. Actually, that should be pushed out a little bit more. There we go, we have all, everything's lined up. Power supply's in there, pretty solid. We've got our SATA connectors. We've got all of the power going. Now we just need to go to the motherboard. 
and then take a look at some of this stuff. We're going to leave this front panel stuff till later. And let's plug in our main power here. It's got to go in that way, yeah. So just make sure that's, don't push it too much, but make sure it's seated there well. And then I believe we had another pin here. Yep, we have a four here. And this should go in like this. Okay, there is our power. Now, where is our SATA? So our SATAs, are they labeled? Let's see if they are labeled here. Okay, after looking at it, it looks like SATA 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So let's get these connected here. All right, now we got our hard drives in. Okay, here's where we stand. I was able to connect the front power and reset. Unfortunately, these are the two connectors for your USB and this particular motherboard doesn't want those connectors. And the connectors I purchased, unfortunately aren't gonna work for this particular motherboard. That's the thing about AliExpress and even these N100 boards, they all have different pin layouts. So you gotta look at wherever you purchase from, hopefully they have something for you in terms of some type of documentation. This one did, I'm just gonna have to get some different adapters just to make the this front USB and USB-C work. It's not a huge deal because you always have the onboard stuff on back, but you are lacking a USB-C here um, if you want to use that instead of something like uh, the 2.0. We are going to now put in the hard drives and they should slide in there, but they're pretty interesting. It comes with these, this little pack here. So let's get out one of our hard drives and see how this all works. It looks like, um, hmm. Looks interesting to me. Let's take a look to see if we can figure this out. I guess one strap per, right? There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's probably right. Okay, now that we got this little handle on, you can see here there's some rubber grommets that go in here. I guess we leave those out. Now, in theory, this should slide in. I'm assuming like that. All right, this is the other one. Make sure this one goes into SATA HD2. This is labeled. Let's slide this one in. They go in pretty easy, not the best method. Make sure it's seated down in there. Okay, I got it all buttoned up. Now the only thing left to do is actually test to see if we can get into the BIOS. Now we don't have an operating system on the NVMe M.2 drive that we have in there. And obviously we don't have anything on the hard drives that are actually in the base. So what we're gonna do is just see if we can boot into the BIOS. It should be like delete or F7 or F8. So let's go over, get this all plugged in, put it on a monitor and see if it recognizes everything. Okay, so now it is time for the moment of truth. I'm gonna push the power on, and we're gonna see what happens here. Oh, and it looks like we have Joy. This is asking to enter the setup. All right, great. So first thing we have here is 16 gigabytes of memory. Perfect. N100. Yep, that all looks right so far. Let's go over here. Let's go down to MBME config. It does see our 256 NVMe. Let's go back one. Let's go up to yeah, chipset. Let's look at our SATAs. So there's our NVMe. There is our one SATA. And we have both of them plugged in. There should be SATA 1, SATA 2. But this might just be, it's just not seeing it. This will be interesting, but I do have an idea. I wasn't intending on putting any software on this, but we can actually use a little jump drive that we have. I think I have De uh, Debian on here somewhere. We'll plug that in, have it boot to the USB drive, pretend like we're installing that operating system, and that will tell us what drives we're seeing when we go to install it on there. Debian 12 from the USB drive. I'm going to select graphical install. We will walk through this, so it'll probably tell us a couple things that we need to know. So it should now launch into, there it goes, English, United States, English. Detecting the mount, just of the uh, USB drive. And it should ask us some questions here. Oh, that's cool. So it detected all of my ports there. Since this is a NAS motherboard, it has four NIC cards on it. 
So four ether, there it all is. So this is just asking me where it's not connected. So we'll just use that one. It'll probably fail since it's not in there. All right, now it's detecting our disks. So the moment of truth, does it see all of our disks? Oh uh, no. Let's go to manual. And what does it see here? Good, good, good. It definitely sees both those disks. Here's those two spinning disks. And here is the MBME. So that's all good news. So hopefully that wasn't too bad. And I appreciate you all sticking around. I wanted to conclude. It's actually the next morning. I ended up getting a little bit tired from all that research and figuring out the pins and stuff. Typically that doesn't happen, especially if you're getting it from something like Amazon. But if you're going with someone like AliExpress or direct from China, you just want to make sure that you find a listing that's going to at the very least have the pinouts or even better, if it has a link to the product manual, that would be great, especially if it's in your native language. So that's just a pro tip if you are gonna be buying stuff direct from China. The other thing is we did struggle. We got the wrong adapters, unfortunately, to be able to hook up the front USBs. If I do find those adapters for this particular board, it'll be linked down below along with all the other things that I used. Now we did use this Jonesboro N2 case it is really, really cool. I recommend it if you're going to look at a small little NAS and it looks really, really cool. I got it in white, they have it in black. I really, really do like the case. They didn't sponsor this. None of this stuff is sponsored. Purchase all this stuff with my own money, but this is just my honest opinion. It's, it's a pretty good route to go if you're looking for a case, especially in the ITX format. So the next thing will be part two, and that is actually putting software on this NAS. Now I won't bore you with the details, but there's a couple different decisions that I have to make, and I'll walk you through that in the next video, and then we'll actually install the NAS software on this box and perhaps some other applications as well. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, or you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. My name's Hill Phantom, and I'll see you next time.